Okay, so we're all right. So this one is the first lesson of set theory. It's um, the next three units are all wordy lessons. So if you're like, I'm not going to do word problems, then you're not going to do any questions in any of the units because they are all word problems. So don't buck the system. Just learn how to do it. Okay. So compound statements. A compound statement is a statement formed by combining two or more statements. The word and or or are often used to form st compound statements. For example, and they're not going to be this ridiculous, just so you know. It is 20 degrees outside and it is not Saturday today. It is 20 degrees outside or it is not Saturday today are compound statements. That is not something you're going to do. You're not going to be like, is it sunny? Is it Saturday? Is it, what is it? It's not going to happen. So that's just a compound statement. It's, it's one where you have a start and an end and an or or an and in between. It's basically all that that's saying. So forming a compound statement using the word and. The conjunction of two statements can be formed by using the word and. And a conjunction is not a conjunction is true only if both of the original statements are true. It's false otherwise. Basically, with and it has to be in one and the other, or it can be in this one or this one. You need to understand the difference between the ands and the ors. So flip over and we'll look at that in a little more detail. So use of or in everyday English is he passes grade 12 physics alone or he passes grade 12 chemistry alone or he passes both grade 12 chemistry physics and grade 12 chemistry and then in mathematics we look at it and it's like in mathematics including set theory we use the word or which always means inclusive versions of or um, so a way to think about this is if you're in what nope if you're in um, math or chemistry, you can be in math or you can be in chemistry, right? Do you have to be in both? No. Or means one or the other, or it could be both. If you're in math and chemistry, it means you have to be taking both. And means you have to be in both, or means you could be in either or. Okay? That's the key thing you need to take out of these. Uh, flip over. Some light reading if you'd really like to. Okay. So this is the exact this is the actual example. Consider the natural numbers. Now to think about this, you have to think about natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, rationals, reals. So up here we're going to give you a little rundown. So you start off with natural numbers. Natural numbers are the ones you naturally count as a child. What do children start with when they start counting? That's letters. So nope. What do they start counting with? One. Some people are like zero, one, two. I'm like, what little child this big starts at zero? No one does. Like, no, not happening. So you naturally count the natural numbers. The natural numbers are one, two, three, etc. So those are your naturals. Then you get a little older and you realize, hey, there's a zero, right? Those are the whole numbers. The whole numbers are the numbers that start with a whole, with zero. And then it's just one, two, three. So the only difference between natural and whole numbers is whole numbers have a zero. They have, and then all the natural numbers. Then you get into junior high and they're like, hey, there's these things called negative numbers and they ruin your life, really, really is what they do. It's like negative seven minus three and you're like negative seven plus negative. It's like, what is happening? I don't know. I don't know. They just ruin your life. So, those are called integers. Integers come along. And so, dot, 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 because they come from all the negative numbers. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, that's a 0. 1, 2, and it keeps going to positive infinity, right? But it doesn't include any decimals. It includes all the positive numbers and all the negative numbers, um, but it doesn't include any decimals. Make sure if you have a phone out that it's away from your body like on the floor or in a bag, not in your pocket and not in front of you, but away, away, poof, that's away, now your phone needs to be away. <laughs> not there either, not there either. The floor is fine, you are so going to, yeah, uh-huh.
Okay. Makes sense? And then rationals are just those decimal values, right? Etc. Pretty sure that... Oh, yeah, it's not. Okay, good. All right. Consider the natural numbers. So what numbers are we looking at? Yeah, the ones you count. One, two, three, etc. That are less than or equal to 15. So if it just said less than 15, we'd do 1 to 14, right? But it says less than or equal to 15, so we inc include 15. Now, we can't include the numbers outside of that, okay? So this is called our universal set. It's the universal set. It's the numbers that we can only use. It limited us to these numbers, which is nice, because if it doesn't limit you to those numbers, you have a ton of numbers that it can be. So the universal set limited us to the numbers from 1 to 15, okay? And then it's going to ask us about odds and primes or odds and primes or factors of 3, etc. The best way to answer the and and or questions is if you go and take all of these pieces and find the numbers that fit into those pieces. So we're going to go up here, and I already wrote the pieces out for you. So we're using the numbers, the universe set 1 to 15. Those are the only numbers we're allowed to use, right? No decimals, nothing like that. We want to list all the odd numbers. So we do a little squiggly bracket because it's the set of odd numbers, and the little squiggly bracket means the set. So the numbers that exist in there are 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, and 15. And then we stop. Because our universal set said we only can use the numbers 1 to 15. Prime numbers gets people all the time. Pri or first off, they don't know what they are. And then when they do, they guess the wrong one. So prime numbers are the numbers that have only factors of 1 in themselves. So 13 is a prime number because the only numbers you can multiply to get you 13 are 1 and 13. 7 is a prime number because the only numbers you can multiply to get are 1 and 7. Okay? 1 is not a prime number. And everyone says it is. Because 1 in itself, itself is 1, right? So it doesn't have 1 and another number that make 1. It's 1. That's the only number you have. So a prime number is not 1. It doesn't start at 1. It starts at 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, etc. But 1 is not a prime number. Don't include it as a prime number. Everyone does. It is not a prime number. The only even prime number is 2. And the reason why the only even prime number is 2 is because once I get to 4, I can divide it by 2, and I get more factors, right? So 4's factors are 1 and 4 and 2 and 2, right? So 2 is the only even prime number. The next one is 3. 4 isn't a prime number because it's 1 and 4, 2 and 2. 5 is a prime number because the only numbers I can multiply for it are 1 and 5. Uh, 6 isn't a prime number because you can get 1 and 6, 2 and 3. 7 is a prime number because the only factors of 7 are 1 and 7. 8 isn't because it's 1 times 8 and 2 times 4. 9 isn't because it's 1 times 9 and 3 times 3. 10 isn't because it's 10 times 1 and 5 times 2. 11 is because it's 1 times 11. 12 isn't. 13 is. 14 isn't and 15 isn't. So those are the only prime numbers that we have from 1 to 15. Okay? There's more in the world, obviously, but we, that's why we like the universal set, because it limits our numbers, right? Factors of 3. What are the factors of 3? Factors of 3, what, is, what can I multiply to get me 3? What numbers? 1 and 1 and 3. That's it. The factors of 5 are 1 and 5. The factors of 7 are 1 and 7, because they're all prime numbers. Multiples of 3 are numbers that you can multiply, um, I guess or you can divide by 3. You start at 3 and you multiply, you add next 3 and the next 3 and the next 3 and the next 3. So our first one would be 3, and if we added 3, or 3 times 2, it would be 6, 3 times 3, 9, and then 15, and then we're done. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You have 12 in there, and then a 15, and then we're done because our universal set limited us to 15. That's the great thing about the universal set. If you didn't have a universal set, we'd have to be like writing for forever, right? It would just keep going. Multiples of 5 that are inclusive of 1 to 15 are 5, 10, and 15. And then multiples of 7 are 7 and 14. 
21 is another one, but we have to stop because we can't go past 15, right? Once we have the numbers that satisfy each of those sets, it's easier to do the ands and the ors, okay? So let's go here, and it says x is odd. Well, then we just list all the odd ones. We've already listed them, so we just relist them. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15. X is prime. We've already listed them, and we only start at 2 first, not 1. 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13. Now the word and. The word and means you need to be this and this. You need to be both. So if I'm asking you, if x is odd and x is prime, what numbers satisfy x is odd and x is prime? Three, uh, three, five, seven, eleven, and thirteen. Yeah. Three, five, seven, eleven, and thirteen. So and means you need to be both, or else we can't count you. And means you need to be both or we can't count you. The next one is x is odd or x is prime. So you list any time where x is odd or x is prime. You're going to get way more answers, right? Most often you'll get more answers. Because you list anything that's odd or prime. It's included. Just like if you take chemistry or you take physics. I would count all the kids who took chemistry or all the kids who took physics and I'd add them all up. Because they can take chemistry or physics and I count them. Here, they could be odd or they could be prime, and I count them. I take them, okay? So, 1 is odd, 2 is prime, 3 is both, that's good. 5 is both, that's good. Does it matter if they're in both? No, that means they're still in either or. They just can be in both, too. It doesn't matter. 7, 9, 11, 13, 15. When it's or, you list anything in either of them. So it's often more numbers because you list anything in either of them. And means it has to be in both or means in either. And it can be in both as well. So now we have factors of 3 or 5 or 7. So what does that mean? If you're a factor of 3, 5, or 7, we're going we're gonna to use those numbers and write them. Now, 3, 5, and 7 both share the number 1. So do I write 1 three times? No, I just list it once. So factors of 3, 5, or 7 are the numbers 1, 3, 5, and 7. Because it's or, I list anything in either or. 1, 3, 5, or 7. X is a factor of 3, 5, and 7. So what numbers or number is a factor of 3, 5, and 7? 1. That's it. So and, it has to be in both. Or in either or, we write it. So or often has more. Multiples of 3, 5, and 7. Or. So I list anything that's a in multiple of 3, 5, or 7. So 3, 5, and you usually write them in order from lowest to highest. 6, 7, 9, 10, 12, 14, 15. So this is a lot easier because I wrote all the numbers up here, right? So if you have a word like multiples of 3, 5, or 7, find all the multiples of 3 first. Find all the multiples of 5 first. Find all the multiples of 7 first. Then do the or part of it. It makes life so much easier. You won't miss a number, okay? Is a multiple of 3, 5, and 7, is there any numbers that are a multiple of 3, 5, and 7? Multiple, not factor. Multiple of 3, 5, and 7. Doesn't look like any, right? So it would be squiggly bracket and a zero with a line through it. A zero with a line through it means the empty set. It means the set is empty. There's nothing in that set because there's nothing that exists. And on your formula sheet, it shows that. We're in the logical reasoning unit, so you're going to use these different things. Here, the zero with a line through it means empty set. 
So when there's nothing that's shared by all three or sometimes two, you put an empty set. These are going to be the questions you're going to do. Um, actually, I might limit it. I don't think that that's it. Now, one second. Mm -hmm. 